Did you know Ark used to be an Olympic event? The founder of the modern games, Baron Pierre de Coubertin, was enamored with the idea of the true Olympian being a talented artist and sports person. Thanks to him, between 1912 and 1948, medals were given out for sporting an inspired masterpiece of architecture, music, painting, sculpture, and literature. Good day everyone, we are group 6 and we are going to present and discuss about abstract and visual arts. But before we start, here are the learning objectives. 1. Abstract Art Define what is abstract art and identify the principles of abstract art, abstract artist, and interpretations of abstract art. 2. Visual Art Define what is visual art and learn about the elements and principles of visual art, different colors and its psychological meaning and also shades and shadows. Abstraction literally means the distancing of an idea from object reference. You can also call abstract art as non-representational art. Visual art, on the other hand, are forms of art that you can see, such as drawing, painting, sculpture, printmaking, photography, and filmmaking. Here are the reporters that will discuss each topic. This is a quote by an artist that quote, art is not what you see, but what you make others see. It is by Edgar Degas. So the first topic will be abstract art. And its subcontents are abstract art, principles of abstract art, and interpretations of abstract art. Abstract arts is a non objective art that does not attempt to represent an accurate depiction of any visual reality but instead uses shapes, colors, forms, and gestural marks to achieve its effects. So, since elementary pamanta nakadungog kung unsa ning abstract arts, then nakagama na sa taani. But, for us normal persons, abstract arts are just an artworks. So, para na to normal radyo na siya. But, in the eyes of a pure artist, abstract artworks are artworks that has deep meaning. Wassily, Wassily Ivich Kandinsky gives birth on abstract arts. And he was considered as the father of abstract art. He is a Russian painter and an art theorist. He was born on December 16, 1866 in Moscow, Russia and died on December 13, 1944 in Yulisor, Seen in France. The first abstract art painting that is made was Composition 5 by Kandinsky on 19. 11, and it was considered as the world's first ever abstract picture. Kandinsky also became famous for being a pioneer of abstract arts and for painting some of the earliest works in the genre including what is known as the first abstract watercolor. The Principles of Abstract Arts There are eight principles of abstract arts by Helen Elliot, namely the balance, Contrast, emphasis, unity, variety, movements, rhythm or patterns, and lastly, the individual voice or the soul. So first, balance. Any elements on your design has a visual weight, especially on its objects, text, sizes, shapes, colors, and textures. All of it has weight. Why? Ano kailangan mo na pantay sila tanaon? Because it is important for them to be distributed evenly in your artworks. Diba once na mo tanaw ta sa usak or magamata sa 
magamatag usa ka artworks, di ba? Dapat pantay man siya na mga colors, mga lines. Kay Aaron, haps ay siya tanawon, dili siya gubot. The second one is contrast. It is used to create an obvious difference between the object of your design and highlights them as a result. The third one is emphasis. It highlights the most important elements and make your audience concentrate on the focal point of your design. The fourth one, unity. It refers to the harmony between all parts of your design. The fifth one, variety. It is used to make your artworks explorable and gives the viewer a better experience. So the sixth one, movement. It is used to guide the viewer's eyes that embrace the abstraction departure from its accurate representation. So the seventh one, rhythm or pattern. It is the repeating of the patterns or objects in your design that can make or create a mood or feelings. The last one, individual voice or soul. So wala siya nakabot ng meaning ato pero based ako na sabtan, mo ni siya kanang ang um, feeling sa usa ka author nga want niya nga i-deliver sa mga tao so murag mo ni siya ang centered soul sa usa ka artists these are the examples of artists who creates abstract art first a russian painter wassily kandinsky wassily wassilievich kandinsky was born on december 16 1866 and died on december 30 1944 he lived in Moscow and spent his childhood in Odessa, where he graduated at Grekov Odessa School. He enrolled at the University of Moscow in studying law and economics and is offered chair of Roman law. At the age of 30, he began painting studies such as life drawing, sketching, and anatomy. He is the first pioneer of abstract art and painted the first abstract watercolor. He has also painted impressionistic landscape and wood block bricks. And his best known early works is the painting The Blue Rider. The Blue Rider. The painting shows a speeding horse rushing through a rocky meadow, possibly carrying a second figure, perhaps a child. Kandinsky came to believe that objects damage pictures, and he moved toward abstraction. Art was deeply spiritual for Kandinsky, and music was integral to many of his work. He was inspired by color and believed he could convey emotions through yeah. Paul Jackson Pollock was born on January 28, 1912 and died August 11, 1956. He was an American painter and a major figure in the abstract expressionist movement and who was widely noticed for his drip technique. A drip painting is a form of abstract art in which paint is dripped or poured on the canvas. In 2016, Hawks painting titled 178 was reported to have pitched 200 million US dollar in a private purchase. As of March 2022, it is ranked fifth on the list of the most expensive paintings. This is the painting of 178. The painting is all painted on fiberboard and is a drip painting created by flashing paint on the horizontal surface. Pete Mondrian. Pete Mondrian, original name is Peter Carnellis. Mondrian was born on March 7, 1872, and died on February 1, 1944. He is known for being one of the pioneers of the 20th century abstract art. Mondrian was highly utopian and was concerned with a search for universal values and aesthetics. Pete Mondrian has changed his artistic direction from figurative painting to an increasingly abstract style. Until he reached a point where his artistic vocabulary was reduced to a simple geometric elements. In 1914, 
Mondrian says that art is higher than reality and has no direct relation to reality. To approach the spiritual in art, one will make as little use as possible of reality because reality is opposed to the spiritual. We find ourselves in the presence of an abstract art. Art should be above reality. Otherwise, it would have no value for men. His art, however, always remained rooted in nature. This is the painting of the evening red tree in 1908 and 1910. This painting shows the artist's luminous period, where he painted realistically but with brighter than actual colors and simplifying contours. This painting is a crossover to his more rectangular and analytical style. Mark Rutko was born on September 25, 1903 and died on February 25, 1970. Rutko is an American abstract painter of Latvian Jewish descent. He is best known for his color field paintings that affected irregular and painterly rectangular regions of color, which he produced from 1949 to 1970. He is associated with the American Abstract Expressionist movement of modern art, even though he didn't prescribe any school. Rutko emigrates to Portland, Oregon from Russia together with his family and later moved to New York City, where his youthful period of artistic production dealt primarily with urban scenery. During 1940s, in response to World War II, entered a transitional phase where he experimented with mythological themes and surrealism to express tragedy. Rutko painted canvases with regions of pure color toward the end of the decade, which he further abstracted into rectangular color forms, the idiom he would use for the rest of his life. Later in 1947, largely abandoned conventional titles, he also said that silence is so accurate as he resisted explaining the meaning of his work, fearing that words would only paralyze the viewer's mind and imagination. This is the painting of Antartog in 1952. In common with Rutko's other works from this period, it consists of large expanses of color delineated by an even, hazy shape. Hernando Ruiz Ocampo was born on April 28, 1911 and died on December 28, 1978. He was a Filipino national artist in the visual art, a fictionist, a playwright, and editor. He is best known for his abstract paintings following modernist traditions where he used bold color palettes and biomorphic shapes inspired by both his country landscape and by science fiction writing. Fernando Ruiz Ocampo was a leading radical modernist artist in the Philippines, a member of Tasa de Oro group and one of the pre-war 13 moderns consists of modernist artists founded by Victorio C. Idales in 1938. Ocampo is also famously known for his triumvirate with neorealist Vicente S. Manansala and Cesar Legazpi. His works reflected the harsh realities of his country after the Second World War. However, Many of his works depicted lush sceneries and the beautiful Philippine landscapes through his skillful use of fierce and bold colors. He was then created for inventing a new mode of abstraction that improvised Philippine flora, fauna, portraits, sunshine, and rain. Ocampo utilized fantasy and science fiction bases for his work by using movement and bold colors. He then described his art to be abstract compositions of biological forms that seem to oscillate, quaver, inflame, and multiply like 
mutations. Mutation in 1950. The result is most famously addressed in his pioneering 1950 work mutation, which illustrates cell like amoeba or bacteria dressed in polka dot patterns and brilliant tropical colors. It would set up a 28 years long journey of discovery by a complex pan fungus team by utilizing a composition of flowing cubistic shapes colored pattern in sharp oranges, canary yellows, shell reds, deep blues, or tropical greens, utilizing common Filipino motifs, such as Festa, bunting in Festa 1957, a combo produced richly brocaded patterns of color shapes that throb in the visual contrast between warm and cool color, and between round and sharp shapes. Interpretation of Abstract Art Rather than focusing on the truthful depiction of realistic imitation of an object, abstract art looks at other non-objective artistic elements of shape, form, color, and line. Abstract techniques have been used by artists to explore ideas beyond the canvas and our physical reality. Abstraction is often seen to carry a moral dimension. A notion that was particularly prevalent in the late 19th and 20th century, where ideas of spiritualism, purity, and order informed many artists and their work, pulling away from literal and rep representational art. Abstract art is an escape from reality and is vastly open to interpretation realizing that there are different ways to approach and criticize art is important when attempting to understand abstraction it is easy to appreciate a van gogh or a Rem rembrandt as the mastery of technique is visible however in order to appreciate abstraction our focus should not be on how realistically the artist has painted something or someone, but rather on how successful a piece is in evoking emotion. Abstract paintings can also be appreciated in terms of the individual elements of art, color, shape, line, texture, space, value, and etc. An abstract artist's skills lie in his or her ability to use colors, and textures in their best visual strength and to create sound composition from these elements. How to analyze abstract art? These are three basic steps when analyzing any work of art. 1. Description. What do you see? State the obvious and then dig deeper. Identify the elements and the principles of design that you see. What are the colors? Are they warm or cool? Are they saturated or unsaturated? What kinds of lines are used? What shapes? What shapes? It is visually balanced. Does it have symmetrical or asymmetrical balance? Is there a repetition of certain elements? 2. Interpretation. What is the artwork trying to say? How do the things you see and describe contribute to its message how does it make you feel is there rhythm or movement does it make you feel happy or sad does it convey energy or does it convey a sense of stillness and peace read the title of the painting it can give you some insights into its meaning or intent Three, evaluation. Does it work or are you moved by it in any way? Do you understand the artist's intent? The, does it speak to you? Not every painting is speak, going to speak to every person. As Pablo Picasso said, there is no abstract art. You must always chart, start with something. Afterward, you can remove all traces of reality. Most abstract art start with a common human experience, 
you might just have to spend some time with a painting to uncover what that is and what it means to you. A painting represents a unique rep conversation between the artist and, and a particular viewer. Although you don't have to know anything about the artist in order to be moved by a painting, it is likely that the viewer will with the greatest knowledge of the abstract artist and his or her background with, will most appreciate and understand the artwork. Good day everyone, this is Jobelin in Lakaya, BTVT Ed, major in HRS, and I am here to report about the visual arts. So what do you mean by visual arts? The visual arts are are art forms that focus on creating pieces of work that mainly make use of the visual environment while trying to convey messages of emotion, ideas, or information. So, when we say visual, it means that we can see it through our sight. Visual art covers the three main side fields, which are fine art, decorative art, and contemporary art. So fine art refers to an art form practiced mainly for its aesthetic value and its beauty rather than its functional value. So fine art is rooted in drawing and design-based works such as painting, drawing, sculpture, and architecture. So kaybo naman ta kung unsa ang painting, drawing, sculpture, and architecture. No, so these are the examples of fine art. So, so we will proceed to the next, which is decorative arts. Decorative arts are are arts or crafts whose object is the design and manufacture of objects that are both beautiful and functional. It includes most of the arts making objects for the interiors of buildings and interior design, but not usually architecture. So the example of the decorative arts are tapestry, ceramics, mosaic art, glass art, jewelry art. So, ang tapestry art is a form of textile art. So, isa ni siya nga cloth nga magtahit-tahit ta nga na ay na ay pattern nga atong sundon para mahimus para ma, makagama ta o kanang atong desired, desired art. So, makita ni nato sa atong so, naaman siguro ni sa atong kwarto or kanang koan sa atong sala. So, so, si, si, next is the ceramic. Ceramic uh, is an art made from ceramic materials including clay. It was hardened by heat. Ang example ani is ka ng mga artistic pottery, tableware, tiles, and figurines mo ng example sa ceramic art. So, ang mosaic art is a pattern or image made of small, regular, or irregular pieces of colored stone, glass, or ceramic held in places by plaster or mortal and covering a face uh, covering a surface so mosaics are often used as floor and wall decoration and were particularly popular in the ancient in the ancient roman world so nakahimo mi aning mosaic art pa grade pa grade 9 i think pero among gigamit is kanang paper construction construction papers next is the contemporary art Contemporary art refers to art made and produced by artists living today. Today's artists work in and respond to a global environment that is culturally diverse, technolo technologically advancing, and multifaceted. This discipline relates to, to similar areas such as art and art history, graphic design, and cultural studies. It includes artistic photo graphy art print video art animation graffiti art so ang graffiti art is a term refers to images or text nga makita nato sa building and typically using spray paint so these are the summarization of visual arts visual art is everywhere you may, you may not know it but visual art is the means we communicate it is in the food we ate we eat the clothes we wear, the, ro the road we pass on, the co car we ride on, the website we navigate, the store we buy from, and practically anywhere we set our eyes on. So visual art is a fundamental component of the human experience reflecting the world and the time in which we live. Art can help us understand our history, our culture, our lives, and the experience of others in a manner that cannot be achieved through 
other means. So, naman di, ibang mga tao nga, mawo sila mo open up sa ilang pamilya, mawo sila mo mo open up o sa, sa ilahang ka ng mga amigo. So, muhuan, so ipagawas lang ilahang gibati sa sa pag-drawing. So, nga naka-helpful ang art sad. So, it can also be a source of in inspiration, reflection, and joy. So, how is visual art important? Imagine a world without art. No music, no movies, no paintings, no drawings, no designs, and etc. So, the world will be a very dull place to live in. Perhaps the only thing we, we would be seeing is black and white. No laughter, no smiles, practically no emotions at all. So that's all. Thank you. The seven elements of art. The line, shape, form, space, texture, value, and color. The elements of art are commonly used group of aspects of a work of art used in teaching analysis combined with the principles of art, also known as the building blocks of an artwork made up of line, shape, color, texture, space, form, and value. The importance of elements of art. Number one, describe what an artist has done. Two, analyze what is going on in a particular piece. Three, communicate our thoughts and findings using a common language. Also remember, no elements of art, no artwork. Elements of art number one, form. Form may be created by the forming of two or more shapes or as three-dimensional shape, cube, pyramid, spare, etc. It may be enhanced by tone, texture, and color. Form is considered three-dimensional showing height, width, and depth. Examples of these are sculpture, theater play, and figurine. Examples of form. Texture. The texture is the quality of surface or the way any work of art is represented. Lines and shading can be used to create different textures as well. For example, if one is portraying certain fabrics, one needs to give the feeling of the right texture so that it closely resembles what the artist is trying to convey. Examples of texture Shape Shape pertains to the use of areas in two-dimensional space that can be defined by edges setting one flat specific space apart from another. Shapes can be geometric examples square, circle, triangle, hexagon, etc., or organic such as the shape of paddle, blob, leaf, boomerang, etc. In nature, shapes are defined by another by other elements of art. Space, line, texture, value, color, and form. Examples of shape. Space Space is the area provided for a particular purpose. It may have two dimensions, length and width, such as floor, or it may have three dimensions, length, width, and height. Space includes the background, foreground, and middle ground. Space refers to the distance or areas around, between, or within components of a piece. Two types of space. Space. Positive space refers to the space of a shape representing the subject matter. Negative space refers to the space around and between the subject matter, like the picture below. Examples of space. Color. Color pertains to the use of who in artwork and design, defined as primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, which cannot be mixed in pigment from other whose secondary colors, green, orange, purple, which are directly mixed from combinations of primary colors. Further combinations of primary and secondary colors create tertiary and more whose tint and shades are references to adding variation in values. Examples of color 
Value. Value or tone refers to the use of light and dark, shade and highlight in an artwork. Value is directly related to contrast. Example of value. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And to our subject teacher, good morning, ma'am. Our topic discussion is all about colors. Color is a powerful communication tool can be used to signal action, influence mood, and even influence physiological reaction. Certain colors have been associated with increased blood pressure, increased metabolism, and every strain. Color symbolism in art and anthropology refers to the use of color as a symbol in various cultures. There is a great diversity in the use of colors and their association between cultures, and even within the same culture in different time periods. The same color may have very different association within the same culture at any time. Diversity in color symbolism occurs because color meaning and symbolism occur on an individual, cultural, and universal basis. Color symbolism is also context-dependent and influenced by change over time. Symbolic representation of religious concepts or articles may include a specific color with the concept or object is associated. Vision is obviously involved in the perception of color. A person can see in dim light, however, without being able to distinguish colors. Only when more light is present do colors appear. Light of some critical intensity, therefore, is also necessary for color perception. Finally, the manner in which the brain responds to visual stimuli must also be considered. Even under identical condition, the same object may appear red to one observer and orange to another. Clearly, the perception of color depends on vision, light, and individual interpretation and understanding of color involves basic psychology and physical. In basic, color is associated specifically with electromagnetic radiation of a certain range of wavelengths visible to the human eye. And that's all. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I'm with Felipe Quadra, and I'm going to be discussing about principles of art. So... The eight principles of art are balance, emphasis, movement, pattern, repetition, proportion, rhythm, and variety. So, first is balance. So, balance is the distribution of the visual weight of objects, colors, texture, and space. If the design was a scale, this element should be balanced to make a design feel stable. Next, emphasis. Emphasis is the part of the design that catches the viewer's attention. Usually, the artist will make one area stand out by contrasting it with other area. The area should be different in size, color, texture, shape, and etc. Next, movement. Movement is the path the viewer's eyes take through the work of art, often the focal areas. Such movement can be directed along lines, edges, shape, and color within the work of art. Next, pattern. Pattern is the repeating of an object or symbol all over the work of art. Next, repetition. Repetition works with pattern to make the work of art seem active. The repetition of elements of design creates unity 
within the work of art. Proportion Proportion is the feeling of unity when created all parts. It includes sizes, amounts, or number. Relate well with each other. When drawing the human figure, proportion can refer to the size of the head compared to the rest of the body. Rhythm Rhythm is created when one or more elements of design are usually repeated to create a feeling of organized movement. Rhythm creates a mood like music or dancing. To keep rhythm exciting and active, variety is essential. And the last, variety. Variety is the use of several elements of design to hold the viewer's attention and to guide the viewer's eye through and around the work of art. So that is all the principles of art. So the next is about psychological meaning of color. Color psychology is the study of use as a determinant of human behavior. Carl Jung has been credited as one of the pioneers in this field for his explorations into the properties and meanings of colors in our lives. Color influences perceptions that are not abused, such as the taste of food. It is the study of how certain colors impact human behavior. Different colors have different meanings, connotations, and psychological effects that vary across different cultures. Along with cultural differences, color psychology is largely impacted by personal preference. So, here are some purposes about psychological meaning of color. It is the study of how colors affect perceptions and behaviors. In marketing and branding, color psychology is focused on how colors impact consumers' impressions of a brand and whether or not they persuade consumers to consider specific brands or make a purchase. So, here are examples of psychological meaning of color as you can see that every color has meaning the red the orange or and so on shade and shadows what is shade and shadows in arts arts uses values to translate lights and shadow they say into shading, thus creating the illusion of a third dimension. Shade is the darkness of an object, not in direct light, while the shadows are the silhouettes of an object shaped on another surface. Created by the same light, shades and shadows react differently and both influence how one perceives face colors and filling. The use of a shade is creating a convincing representational image of an object or figure in a drawing or painting is usually a matter of shading the form. Using gradation of lights and shadows to give the illusion volume and dimen dimensionality. The shadows reveal much about an object extension in space. They are often to heighten the illusion of deep in a painting.